Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. Right off the bat, all of this is my first encounter with Nvidia's latest offering, Turing based GPUs. I won't bother you with ray tracing this, ray tracing that, enabling support, tensor cores and so on. You've probably already went through all of those features upon initial launch, so I'll get right to the point. Although they do not enjoy that much of a worldwide popularity or market share as the Holy Trinity, the big A. MG Trio, they are a very prominent brand and have been around for as long as I can remember. The RTX 2080 Ti model which I have here comes from their pretty famous Phoenix series, with this particular one also being labeled as the Golden Sample, a special sub-series naming which is ongoing for quite a time now. Although on this model the speed of the new GDDR6 video memory remains the same, this means that it has a bumped up GPU core clock speed compared to that seen on the reference pack model from 1545MHz to 1650MHz for the core boost clock. In practice it went way above that thanks to the GPU boost 4.0 technology, boosting just a bit below 1900MHz in games and certain benchmarks. The card itself is really big, like really, really big. It takes almost three slots height-wise, so be sure to have that in mind if you have other occupied expansion slots around it, while it's close to being 30 centimeters long and weighing in at just about 1.3 kilograms. The outer shell looks pretty decent, it's made out of black plastic combined with few metal-like pieces for added detail and contrast. On the back we have this pretty subtle black brushed metal backplate, which before all makes the card more rigid, with a couple of details like this abstract drawing of a phoenix bird and gold GS sign. Cooling system itself consists out of two big aluminium blocks interconnected with what seems to be a four 8mm thick copper heat pipes. You'll also see that we have a lot of metal contact plates leaning against the rest of the card's vital parts for better heat transfer. Judging by the pictures of the reference card and taking a closer look at this one in hand, the PCB itself and other components on it, like the power design for example, look to be of a reference design and not a custom made one, but don't take my word for it, it's just my guess to all of this is topped off with three fans, two bigger 90mm ones on the outer side and 75mm middle one which is also surrounded by these two arrow-like RGB strips on top and bottom. This can be controlled using Gainward's own software utility called the Expert Tool 2, where you can choose between your most common RGB lighting options and effects, as well as change the color. But I have to admit that the amount and positioning of this lighting feels a bit underwhelming considering how imposing this graphics card is, like putting a 2 meter tall person in a kid sized go kart. For the video output selection you'll also get a reference setup with three display ports, one HDMI and one USB Type-C. Opposite of those, on the back end of the card you'll see two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors for powering the card. That said, under heavy load during gameplay you can see it pulling anywhere from 300 to 400 watts in total and together with the rest of the PC components. That's actually not that much considering the scale of performance you're getting, while under idle I saw power consumption of around 45 watts. As for the performance, taking a look at my results, it's all there, as expected and as seen in those initial RTX series reviews. I feel like these two resolutions which I used to test it out get the best out of this card, especially if you have a high refresh rate display, you will be able to take advantage of the access frame rates that this model is spitting out. Yes, of course, and 4K will be doable too, no problem, but don't expect to distance yourself from 60 FPS too far, especially if you go all in on graphical settings.
taking a ride on the overclocking boulevard, although there is an automatic overclocking feature available with this series through the already mentioned Gainwards utility software, it still didn't match my manual overclocking settings. I've managed to max out the memory to 2000 MHz or 8 GHz effectively, I assume it can probably go even higher with the limiter being removed, while I bumped up the GPU core clock for additional 130 MHz, which resulted in a GPU boost clock of just a bit about 2000 MHz for the most time, usually hanging around that much mark, even close to 2050MHz if I cranked up the fan speed. With these changes I've got additional 5-10% to performance gain, depending on the title. It's not much, but it's something for basically nothing other than your time spent in order to fine-tune the overclock. And now let's get to the part I was most curious about and probably you will too. As a content creator who uses Creative Cloud Suite, before all the Premiere Pro for video editing, I wanted to check out what's the difference in rendering and export times and real-time scrubbing through footage when jumping from a GTX 1050 Ti which I have in my main machine right now to a monster like the RTX 2080 Ti. Of course it's obvious that the discrepancy will be huge between these two models, but I really wanted to see by how much exactly. And, suffice it to say, I was not disappointed. Exporting my just a bit below 6 minute long 4K video clip with few After Effects animations, titles, color grid and color correction overlays using CUDA acceleration in these export settings here took a total of around 29 minutes with the GTX 1050 Ti. Doing the same with the RTX 2080 Ti ended up with halving that time or to be precise around 14 minutes in total for the job which was around 15 minutes quicker. Scrubbing through footage and playing it in real time with RTX 2080 Ti resulted in almost zero dropped frames with full 4K playback resolution. Occasionally it would drop some if you're passing through a heavy loaded clip with warp stabilization and other effects and overlays, but if you want to make it completely bulletproof you can always use one half for the playback resolution, although personally I wouldn't mind a dropped frame here or there considering the resolution gain, with my GTX 1050 Ti that was one fourth of it at best. With that said, it's not that I'm going to run out and buy myself a RTX 2080 Ti, far from it, but I wouldn't mind having something close to its performance for editing in Premiere Pro. Taking a look at the temperatures, using Fermax stress test to properly load the card, you can see that the temperature limit is around 70 degrees Celsius and the card's BIOS will do anything to keep it that way, even if it needs to throttle the GPU clock speed way down, which can be seen here or with bumping up the fan speed, but that's nothing unusual. On the other hand, while playing games I was again seeing temperatures around 70 degrees Celsius, but with a far lower fan speed and higher or to say normal boost clocks for this type of scenario. Last but not the least, during idle on an open test bed I was seeing temperature mostly roaming just about 30 degrees Celsius mark, which is pretty impressive. That's all well and good, but it got me head scratching. Why didn't they incorporate zero RPM fans off feature when the card is in idle, especially on account of what seems to be a very capable cooler? Thankfully, the fans are so quiet in idle that I barely heard them on an open test bed, so I doubt you'll even notice them at all in a chassis. That lack of greater noise also continues when you put the card under load. If the manufacturer doesn't calibrate the fan profile properly, having three fans can be a two-edged sword, but in this case, Gainward did it right. With having three fans, you have the ability to push more air while keeping the fan speed low, thus generating less noise, but if you get a little bit overboard, it can easily get loud and messy. That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content, that really helps me a lot, and if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below, so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, catch you later guys!